There are many great restaurants across Tennessee, we know that, but it's not often you find an authentic Italian restaurant where most of the ingredients are imported from Italy. To Tammy Arinder, well, it makes a difference, along with the loving care the family puts into creating the dishes. Let's join her right now at a Nashville diner known to the many regulars simply as Coco's. This may look like any Italian restaurant kitchen. Pizzas, pasta, plates of meatballs, but this is far from the ordinary. Many ingredients at Coco's Italian restaurant and market come from Italy. I've driven to Florida to pick up truckloads and New York many times, you know, and it's just what, what I have to do. It's, there are no Italian distributorships in Tennessee or who will ship, like maybe Pennsylvania's as far as they go. So yeah, I'm off and then you know, I'll go up to Harrisburg and with my, I have a big box truck, you know, get pallets and pallets. Or, you know, now I've got enough connections that I can do enough where they'll, I'm getting it shipped in. Chuck Cinelli, Coco's owner, is not just about offering up great food. He wants you to have the Italian experience like he did as a child. His parents and his uncle owned restaurants in upstate New York. Little did he know that as a kid, he would be training for a future eatery of his own. I really lost a million dollars worth of information. If I knew I would be in a restaurant business, I mean, I, I had it all right there and I didn't pay attention. You know, I was just, I ate there all the time. I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was fantastic, but no, I, I can't say I took advantage of it. But I think through osmosis, I really understand it. So I got, I got, got that. After his parents retired and left New York, Chuck decided he'd find a new place to live and operate his then mail order business. After a brief stop in Nashville on his way to Florida to visit his mom and dad, he decided Music City was a place to be. Well, I just kind of moseyed past Nashville, stopped at a Century 21. They drove me around and I thought, wow, this is a great town. Everybody moved from my hometown, like all my, my family, so I had nothing to lose. I just packed up the truck and moved here. It was in 2010 that Chuck renovated this former muffler shop into a restaurant. That after the local Sons of Italy chapter decided the place no longer worked for their monthly meetings. Many of those from the Italian club often play the game of bocce in front of the restaurant. There you go, nice and nice. Well, you have the little white ball, the Polina. Green shoots. And there's a red and a green team, and whoever's closer to the Polina after you throw four balls each, you get the point. One red. Just another authentic touch. But Chuck scores more points with his customers on the plate than he does on the bocce court. From the scratch-made mozzarella to the homemade pasta, he imports his flour from Italy. He says it's just one of the things that make a difference. The flour is from Italy, and these hands are Italian, I suppose. You know, I don't know. And then, well, actually, and I don't use, I use special water. Uh, I have a pH machine, and I dial in the pH level. He also dials in the most delicious gelato this side of Rome. Gelato is a cousin to ice cream, but has a much richer and creamier taste. Plus, it's a vehicle for all types of other tasty treats. Lemon basil and different herb gelatos are uh, neat. It's like as an intermezzo in between meals, you know, sometimes when I do a special dinner, I'll make something special. <gasps> Ooey gooey cheese. Mm. What you think? That's divine. Stuff? Good. That is divine. Good, good, good. There is something different about a lady from Italy making Italian food. Wonderful. His baked ziti, lasagna, tortellini, and other dishes all come straight from his grandmother's recipe book, which she passed down to his mom, Joan. Joan came out of retirement to come here and make sure the recipes are prepared correctly. My mom's here, which is fantastic. And, I mean, she's here seven days a week. She's here at four or five in the morning. She starts by baking the bread, and then from there, the prep guys come in, and she tastes everything. 
And since mom is the expert, I decided to ask a little advice. All right, Joan, I've got my flour because I love to make my homemade bread. Now I want some really good olive oil just for dipping, not cooking, for dipping. For dipping. What I would recommend would be this one here. This is a first press, okay. which is very good. And this one here is also a, a first press. Now the difference actually is the vessel that it's in. Right. So, okay. so whichever one, you know whichever what, one, believe it or not, I love the greenery here. Uh -huh. I have green accents in my okay. kitchen, so this is perfect. All right. All right. Now I need some of your mother's marinara. Okay. All right. All right. We'll go over here. Okay. Let's go. Lucy's marinara sauce is so good, they've decided to bottle it. It's just one of the many items in the market. The shelves are lined with genuine Italian products from across the pond, giving the everyday home cook a chance to make bona fide fettuccine and other dishes if they take a mind to. <laughs> but Chuck doesn't mind if you want his family to do the cooking. It's his way of sharing a part of his heritage, which he says is something you can enjoy, whether you're from an Italian family or not. If you're from the Northeast or an Italian community, I, I really hope that you feel like you were home again, you know, just for an hour. And if you're not from an Italian community, at least you can see what it was like growing up Italian, you know, with a little bit of bocce and the patio and the music and the food and, you know, the family at a dinner table.